smallest product that you can go in into all of you, depending on what time zone you are watching. So, uh, today's topic will be digital twin technology. But before I start the topic, let me introduce, like, give my introduction to all of you. So, my name is Manish Worker. I guess you must have seen in the previous slide. But what you don't know is, like, many people call me Mr. Worker. Isn't it cool how it just sounds like some underdog agent? But trust me, I'm no spy. I'm just a software developer at DVD, which is located in Pune, India. And a small interesting fact about me is that I am the one of the youngest speaker for the event Escape 2023. <laughs> and just like all of you sitting over here, I am also a tech enthusiast. And being a tech enthusiast and software developer, I like to read a lot of what is emerging technologies which are taking place in this computation world. And today, the one of the technology which has caught up my attention is digital twin technology. And the topic for today's talk will be digital twin technology, bridging the gap between physical and the virtual system. <laughs> and hopefully in the next 30 minutes, you will know everything about what you wanted to know about the digital twin technology. Or maybe not, but anyways, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, let's start with a very simple question. How many of you are wearing a smartwatch or a speed wheel for any health tracking device? Looks like all of you are wearing. I should have asked how many of you are not wearing it. So we all can see that these are the short sides of the revolution that has been taken place in our computation over the last decade. And now, I want all of you to think about me, the elements of the, the small devices. The first element is known as the data. This device is collecting information about us, like about our habits, about our movements, and many things about us. But the data which are collected by the devices are not in generic population data, but this data are the personalized data, data personalized for me or data personalized for you, for an agent. Everyone is the individual. And the next very important element is health importance data, which is known as models. And inside these devices, they consist of very powerful and mathematical models. And some of these models are based on the uh, based on the purely data, like perhaps a machine learning model, which is used to classify whether you are walking, running, or doing any other activity. And there are other types of models also, uh, which is based on the physics, basically the physiological models, which are used to read the equation that are represented by our cardiac function. Now, things get really very interesting when we take the data and the models and just combine them together, and that is mathematically known as data assimilation. And, and now we have the data and we have the models, and now we just Combine them together and we collect the data from the uh, from the devices or the system. And we keep on updating these models. And this updation of the models is not done only once, but this updation of the models is done continuously as the new data is collected from the system or when the system is evolving dynamically. And this all uh, evolution of the data and the model helps us to generate and personalize model. Now the last and very important element is known as the element of prediction. Now, since I have the personalized model ready, and this personalized model is so powerful that it is used, uh, it is so powerful that it is tailored to me as an individual and it is tailored to my dynamic growth over the life. And this is what I am describing. The working together of the data and the models might be very familiar to all of you because it has been driving your choices over the many years. But what you may not know is that the similar revolution of the similar revolution has been taken place in our engineering world also. In our engineering world, the story remains the same. We need the data, we have the models, combine them together and form a personalized model or a virtual model. <laughs> so you can see over here. Uh, personalized model has been ready of an engineering system and it is so powerful that it is it helps us to answer 
many questions like, uh, for example, what will happen if I design the aircraft in this particular way? Will it be able to fly together or hold it together or not? Then, what if the these are, uh, what if the aircraft is damaged at a very high level? Will it be able to hold together or what will be the cost of building the uh, aircraft again? And like, what if I try to fly this aircraft very aggressively? Will you guys able, will you guys be safe with this aircraft or no? That all these all questions are answered by the digital field. Uh, now, just like the example which I took earlier, the about the P2P and the smartphone. We can put together the data and the models of the bus, of this engineering system together and then create a personalized model and the personalized model will be ready and that particular personalized model of any engineering system is known as digital tree. Now let's like consider if you go outside and if anyone asks you to define the term digital tree. So I want all of you that you should be able to tell them that Digital twin is a virtual replica of any physical object, system, or any process. And this virtual counterpart mimics the real world entity's behavior, characteristic, status, by continuously synchronizing with the real time data, which is collected from the sensors and other data sources. <laughs> and now, through the use of the very advanced technology, advanced analytics, and the artificial intelligence, the digital twin technology will be enabling the enhanced monitoring of the optimization of any physical counterpart. Now you might be thinking where the idea of this digital twin was came from. They were the source of this, right? So let me tell you, the idea of the digital twin was coined back in 2010 by one of the NASA scientists, John Nickers. And the, this idea was particularly focused to fix the Apollo 13 aircraft. Uh, but let me tell you, the idea of well, idea of the combining the models and the data just to form a personalized model is much much older than that. And nowadays, many people just point to the Apollo 13 mission to the Apollo 13 mission in which the uh, first in which the digital twin technology was first put in practice. Now let's uh, how many of you have watched this movie Apollo 13? was very famous. Few of them, yeah, no worries. Uh, so, back in 60s and 70s, NASA had launched a spacecraft which was known as Apollo 13. And they had created a virtual simulator on the ground in Austin just to follow along with the mission which was Apollo 13. And now people who have watched the Apollo 13 movie must have seen like, how the aircraft was suffering in the space. It was not able to move. It was malfunctioning. It was not even having the oxygen, and all the, the astronauts which were sent were very suffering with the malfunctioning of the spacecraft. But all thanks to the idea of combining the data and the models. Now, the NASA scientists were able to retrieve the data in the real time from the damaged aircraft, and they were able to fit it into the virtual simulator, which was there in the ground in Austin. And they were able to uh, they were able to replicate the damaged aircraft which was there in the space and due to this they were able to uh, predict the they were able to guide the scientists and predict the outcome of the uh, damaged aircraft which ultimately helped the scientists to bring back the astronauts back home safely. <coughs> now, Let's talk about few of, like some of the benefits about the digital twin technology. Uh, one of the benefits is like the digital twin technology helps us in cost reduction. Let's see how it helps us in cost reduction. <coughs> how many of you are sitting to believe that we just want to move everything from physical world to the virtual world? And let me tell you why, because we all know nowadays the raw material which is used to Manufacture any physical object, like you want to manufacture a car, it is a very costly process, right? Uh, like to the raw material which is there, it's very expensive and it's getting expensive day by day. But on the other hand, if we look at the processors or the chips, which are getting smaller, powerful, and more cheaper day by day. 
So basically, we want to take the whole information from this physical world to the virtual world. And we want to move this because basically, we want to just design the product virtually, then test the product virtually, and then manufacture the product virtually. And when all of this process is done, and once we are happy with the designing of the product virtually, then we can just move this information from the, digital, from the virtual world all the way to the real world. How many of you are familiar with this process? I guess everyone. So this is a car test. So we all know that this is a very expensive process, right? Just to perform a car test. And how many times a test can be performed on one single car? Any guesses? Six. Six. Uh, apparently you are wrong. We can we can do it only once. Okay. So let me just show you one quick example for this. So let's put pictures over here. On the first picture, we on your left side, this is my right hand side. So we can see that the there is a physical car which has been a test which has been performed that car. And any guesses what will be the cost to do this test? Maybe the whole production value of this particular one car, which is a very expensive thing. And like we can do this test on this one physical car at only once. And like if you want to increase the once we have done the test at 20 km per hour speed, okay, then can we just fix that car and perform the same test on that particular car at 50 km per hour speed? No, because by doing the test once, then fixing the car, then doing it again, that is a very, very, very expensive when no company will do it. So, there where a digital twin comes in play. So, on the other side, if you see, there is a digital twin for the virtual replica of the car, in that, uh, how many times you, do you believe that we can perform the test on this car? No. Yeah, you all are right, n number of times, because once we perform the test on this car at 50 km per hour speed, then we can just control our GTA test, respond the result, and then we can perform the test 100 km per hour speed, control our respond the vehicle, then increase or decrease the tire pressure, or like, you roll down the window, alter with the AC, and like perform any number of times. And what is the cost for doing this test on the virtual car? Like negligible. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very, very negligible compared to the test performed on the physical car. <laughs> so this is how the digital team benefits as a cost reduction. The another benefit is the, it helps us in making our decisions better. How many of you are here walk 10 k steps just because of your smartwatch is telling you? Maybe all, even I do that. If smartwatch is not there, then would you just walk 10 k steps? No, right? So this is how it helps to uh, take the decisions in a better way. And it is just making decisions for us to stay us empty. And on the other side, it also alerts us to drink water. It also alerts us about heart beat and everything. Like it monitors our physically and medically. Like it, if and we have any issues in our body, like heart beat will increase or decrease, it just sends us the notification. Due to which we can make our decisions better for us. <laughs> The other benefit is the the other benefit is the it has the digital twin technology also help us in achieving the efficiency in a very much greater way. So we can just do the picture over here. So there is a picture on this side. So uh, just consider if you want to increase the efficiency of this machine, which takes and 10 units of input and produce 10 units of output, can you directly uh, alter the input of this particular machine physically, can you just pass it to 20 units and expect that it will give 30 units of output? No, because we don't know. If it, it, if it consumes like 10 kilowatts of energy and if we alter it with 30 kilowatts of energy, we don't know whether the machine will blast or it will give us the greater efficiency or no. Then in the, like, then the role comes of the virtual machine. Virtually we can do like perform any number of tests. 
we can alter the input value like if you want to increase the from 10 into units of input to make it just 50 units of input and just we can see whether it is giving the greater efficiency or no so this one is few examples how digital twin technology benefits us in cost reduction digital twin technology benefits us in better decision making and also in achieving a greater efficiency now let's see few of the areas in which the digital twin technology takes place. And let me tell you, digital twin technology is moving way well beyond our aerospace engineering and in our healthcare. We can see the digital twin technology of the civil structures or the bases, uh, and it just helps us in structuring, monitoring, and predictive maintenance. Then we can see the digital twin of the buildings or the whole city which provides the more efficiency in energy. Then we can see the digital twin, digital twin of the wind farms, which increase the efficiency and decrease the downtime. And also in natural world, there is a great interest in creating a digital twin, like creating a digital twin of forest, farms, coastal regions, or even the ice streets. Nowadays, people are even talking to create a digital twin of the whole planet Earth. And also in medical world, there is a great deal of interest in creating a digital field. And by creating a digital field of in medical world, it will help and guide the medical assessment for the diagnosis and personal treatment. And also even it will help with the drug testing. And there are many many more potential applications of the digital field. I want all of you to research about like what are the more applications of the digital field once you once we end of this talk. Now, I would not like you to leave my talk thinking today that this all the reality and we can create a digital twin of anything that we want. Then we can create a digital twin of this any complex system. Let me just tell you, creating a digital twin of any engineering system, it is still beyond our reach to create a digital twin of this whole spacecraft and it is still beyond our reach to create a digital twin of the planet Earth. And creating a digital twin of this very, very complex system is very, very, very challenging. It is not an easy task. And now let's see why it is so challenging to create a digital twin of these complex systems. Now let's talk for a minute. So creating a digital twin of this complex system is difficult. One of the reasons is because the scale which this system crosses, it is very very large scale and just duplicating or replicating the whole system, the very large system at very finite level is very difficult. If we just consider a aircraft which is parked in the garage and it is damaged in a microscope, microscopic level of the wings of the aircraft, then just to translate all the information of that damaged aircraft from the microscopic level all the way to the uh, all the way across to the scale so that it will impact the vehicle at, it will impact the vehicle at the so it will impact the vehicle then also uh, in our everyone knows that the, in our body the changes are at very finite level it's either at the molecular level or at the cellular level in our bodies then to translate this information across the scale so that it will have an impact on us at our body at a human level, it's very difficult. And the computational models, which result all these trans, uh, all these uh, scales from the micro micro scales all the way to the system level, are computationally intractable. And we cannot solve them even with today's supercomputer power. Okay, now all of you might say we have a lot of data. Why just we can use that data and learn the digital twin so that it will make our lives much easier. Yeah, you are right, we have a lot of data. But let me tell you, the data which we have are almost never enough for this complex system. And we are very much familiar with this code. Too much is never enough. And the data which we have right now is very uh, noisy data. The data which we have like right now, which we have is very, very indirect data. And as an engineer, we cannot 
we never can predict like what we really want to know or what are we even researching for until unless we get the output we really don't know like what we are searching for uh, let's just consider then the if i want to know the health of this particular aircraft like what is going inside this particular aircraft do you think can i just break the aircraft open and take a look inside no that's like very stupid thing to do so there comes like but let me tell you i'm just limited to the sensor which are placed on the wings of the aircraft which are just trying to uh, which are just trying to uh, see like what is going inside the aircraft or uh, it is just it will just guess like what is the problem inside the aircraft that is also very limited information which we have because we are just dependent on the sensors right now as the technology continues to evolve i will just tell you the future of the digital twin technology holds a very promising advancement and transformation in very uh, in various domains let's just talk about some of these domains so let's just see about the artificial intelligence integration when the digital twin technology will be integrated with the artificial intelligence it will become way more intelligent than now it is and then it will indirectly help us to get the more accurate insights and the prediction of any genetic system the other domain is known as the virtual reality and augmented reality so once the digital twin technology will be integrated with the virtual reality and the augmented reality it will basically enables the user to interact with and virtualize the virtual replicas in very much more enhanced way and let me tell you industries will also in future many many industries will also implement the digital to on a very large scale they will just try to replicate the whole industry on the whole city and the whole factory and even the ecosystem like this will provide a more comprehensive understanding of these interconnected systems now i am really very excited for the future of digital twin like where the digital twin technology will be enabling more efficient engineering system digital twin technology will be enabling better understanding of the natural world then also digital twin technology will be enabling better medical outcomes now once you look this talk i want all of you to discuss among yourself about the digital twin technology that is been taking place in our daily life just after this talk go out there observe things around you discuss among yourself what are the things that has been taking place like in which the digital twin technology is getting involved let me just give some real life examples so that the concept will be more clear for all of you uh, how many of you heard about the lens card <coughs> so basically people who in, from india are watching this might know what is lens card but for the audience who are watching from the other countries or the audience who don't know what is lens card let me just give you like small introduction about the lens card so basically the lens card is a company which provides these frames to the user and when the technology was not there so initially like we used to go to the stores and try n number of frames which we used to suit for us like our face like if you don't like this then we just keep it and try again which was a very time consuming process right but due to this combining of the data and the models and creating a whole replica of yourself it is just making us like task easy if you look at look at this example how the lens card is creating a replica of your face and then once the replica has been created then you can just try any number of frames which will save a lot of time of yours like if you want to see any frame in any different colors or anything you can just try online so you you guys can just try afterwards you see if you want any frames or not so there is an another example which i found on youtube so here this guy just tried to he just created a whole replica of his house in which he placed few temperature sensing sensors in the corner of the house and he is just monitoring the temperature of the house and he is just seeing like it is whether this temperature is perfect for it or no 
or uh, then you can increase or decrease the temperature if he wants according to him or according to the other family members which are like inside the house. Now I do believe 90% of people who are watching me have used this beat emoji or the avatar in their life just to dress up yourself. If there is any new update you just go and dress up yourself. So this is also a type of digital painting. What is this? This people are like a beat emoji is also a replica of yourself, right? You just uh, you just customize yourself. If you want a black shirt or a blue shirt or a grey shirt, you just alter your anything like if you want you can just personalize yourself like according to you which you like so this is also a sort of digital print uh, let me just tell you digital print technology not only help us in our engineering system and provides technical solutions but it also helps us in our real life and it also helps us to live our life in a very fun way now we all know we all are very curious people so we know we all are very curious people so i just want all of you to start observing things around you and start thinking of the things that can have a digital twin and that are unexplored here, okay so that who knows like if you see anything which are the idea which are which you can create a digital twin and which is not explored yet and who knows like you may find your own next startup idea and and if you do find any startup idea, you can hit me up on any of my social media accounts. Thank you for your time and patience.